Welcome back. One of the most significant features of our planet is the fact that 70% of its surface is covered by an ocean. This ocean distinguishes our planet from thousands of others and is crucial to the conditions that support life. Despite its vast size, our ocean is currently undergoing global changes, some of which are the most rapid in our planet's history. In addition to stresses such as overfishing and pollution that are arising on a local scale, there are a number of stresses that have their origin at global or planetary levels. These changes are referred to as global climate change. Many of these changes have no precedent in millions of years and are interacting with local stresses to have potent effects on tropical coastal ecosystems. In this lecture, we will focus on global climate change, outlining its causes and exploring their impacts and discussing the implications and solutions to this enormous challenge that's facing coral reefs and humanity. But first, here is a brief introduction to the key factors that determine the average temperature of our planet. Planetary temperature is a consequence of the ratio between incoming and outgoing radiation and the absorption of energy by land, sea and atmosphere. At equilibrium, incoming and outgoing radiation to the Earth should be equal, and if so, the temperature will be stable change the magnitude of any one of these arrows and planetary temperature will change. Incoming and outgoing radiation can change as a result of a number of variables. The first is that the distance from the sun or the solar intensity, which can have a small but important effect, can change. The second is the amount of reflectivity. Changes in vegetation, clouds and ice fields can change the amount of energy that's reflected back into space. This can have a very important effect on the planetary heat balance. The third is the composition of the atmosphere. Gases such as carbon dioxide and methane absorb infrared radiation, resulting in a greater retention of energy within the Earth's system. Atmospheric gases that absorb infrared radiation are referred to as greenhouse gases. Now, without significant concentrations of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, the average temperature of our planet would be a chilly minus 18 degrees Celsius. So greenhouse gases are important to life on Earth. However, as we will learn, it's the enhanced greenhouse effect that's causing concerns. Scientists have learnt a lot about the variability in the heat balance of the Earth over time from studying long-term records such as ice cores. Using these records, scientists have been able to reconstruct the average global temperature going back 800,000 years at least. This information reveals that the Earth has undergone some very significant shifts in average global temperature, all of these occurring as shifts over thousands of years. These shifts in average global temperature are being triggered by long-term variability in the position of the Earth relative to the Sun. In the cooler phase, with the Earth being slightly further away from the Sun, ice ages have occurred on Earth. During the warm phase, however, with the Earth being slightly closer to the Sun, warm interglacial periods have occurred. This variability is referred to as the Milankovitch cycle and we are currently in a warm interglacial period. Now, while an important feature of the Milankovitch cycle is the change in CO2 over time, it is not a cause of the changing temperature. By this, we mean that other processes such as the storage of carbon in locations such as the Arctic tundra and biological cycles associated with the ocean are responding to temperature and altering the concentration of carbon dioxide. Now our understanding of precisely why carbon dioxide responds in this way is not clear at this point. However, the patterns which have occurred during the Milankovitch cycle are fundamentally different to the ones that we see in the current period of rapid anthropogenic climate change, where CO2 and other greenhouse gases are increasing and are driving a change in planetary temperature, not the reverse. As a result of changes to the position of the Earth relative to the Sun, 
conditions 20,000 years ago were much colder than they are today. In fact, the Earth was in the grip of an ice age which lasted thousands of years. However, starting about 20,000 years ago, conditions began to warm until they began to stabilise about 11,700 years ago. Now this period from 11,700 years ago is referred to as the Holocene Epoch. It is in this period that human civilization began to take off at various points across the planet. Up until 150 years ago, carbon dioxide ranged around 280 parts per million and the average global temperature remained constant for thousands of years, plus or minus a few fractions of a degree. However, 150 years ago, the heat balance of the Earth began to change. The first change that occurred was that the atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane, began to increase as a result of the escalation of the use of fossil fuels, such as coal, oil and gas, as the Industrial Revolution took place. The second change was that the average temperature of our planet began to increase in response to the increase in atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Today, the concentration of carbon dioxide has increased to 400 parts per million, which is 120 parts per million more than it was prior to 1870. In response, average global temperature has increased by 0.8 degrees Celsius. The rates of some of these changes are unprecedented in millions, if not tens of millions of years. These rapid changes in global temperature have not occurred evenly across the planet. Polar regions, for example, have increased at rates which are two to three times faster than more temperate and equatorial locations. Land areas are also heating at rates that are faster than adjacent ocean areas. The difference in the rates of heating are driving changes in weather patterns that include stronger storms, longer droughts, or heavier rainfall, depending on the region in question. Here is a summary of the major changes that are associated with global warming. Land temperatures are increasing at the rate of around 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade. Rainfall has been increasing in some regions while decreasing in others. Storm systems have become stronger in some, some areas. And impacts on human infrastructure from storms and floods has increased significantly. And many regions are experiencing record droughts like none previously experienced. The ocean plays a dominant influence on the heat budget of the Earth. Over 90% of the energy trapped as a result of the enhanced greenhouse effect has been absorbed by the ocean. This added heat to the ocean has changed the characteristics of the ocean in the following ways over the past century. The first is that sea levels have risen by around 30 centimetres. Secondly, ocean temperatures have increased on average by 0.7 degrees Celsius. Thirdly, summer sea ice in the Arctic has decreased dramatically with approximately 50 to 75 percent, depending on the measure, being lost since 1979. Four, Oxygen levels are decreasing in the bulk ocean. Five, oceans have become much more stratified in many regions, reducing the mixing and nutrient regeneration that's so important to the upper layers of the ocean. And there is one other major change associated with the rise of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And this is the problem of ocean acidification. As we've discussed previously, the increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide can cause big changes in the chemistry of the ocean. As carbon dioxide is increased in the atmosphere, an increased amount of CO2 has gone into the upper layers of the ocean. Once in the ocean, carbon dioxide likes to combine with water to create a dilute acid known as carbonic acid. Carbonic acid, in turn, then dissociates, creating a proton that likes to bind to carbonate, turning them into bicarbonate ions. Now, carbonate ions, of course, are important for calcification, and hence any decrease in carbonate ions makes calcification much more difficult. In summary, adding CO2 to the atmosphere is decreasing the pH and the concentration of carbonate ions, 
leading to a decrease in calcification and negative effects on the calcium carbonate balance of coral reefs. The impacts of climate change and ocean acidification on oceanic ecosystems has begun to gain the attention of many biologists and ecologists. In a recent study undertaken by Dr. Elvira Polichanska and colleagues, for example, 81% of long-term studies of marine organisms have revealed that the organisms are moving to higher latitudes as oceans warm. In the same study, Polichanska and her colleagues were able to show that reproduction was occurring at an earlier date due to the earlier arrival of spring and summer conditions. Both these changes are presenting fundamental challenges to the management of natural resources and fisheries as the distribution and abundance of organisms and ecosystem changes. There are numerous cases now of tropical organisms that are invading temperate coastlines. In this respect, scientists talk about the tropicalization of higher latitude locations. There is now a very substantial body of evidence for a range of impacts on the ocean and its ecosystems by climate change and ocean acidification. In understanding climate change and its ramifications, it is very important to base discussions on the broadest consensus possible of the science behind climate change, ocean acidification and their impacts. One of the scientific bodies that develops a consensus summary of the evidence for climate change, ocean acidification and their impacts is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC. Set up by the United Nations and the World Meteorological Association, the IPCC represents a group of several hundred highly qualified experts whose charter is to assess the evidence for climate change and its impacts. Given the importance of this organisation, it is an imperative that you increase your understanding of the IPCC in the next knowledge acquisition moment. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was established in 1988 to assess the scientific, technical and socio-economic information relevant to the understanding of the risk of human-induced climate change. In a world in which climate change and ocean acidification are becoming increasingly contentious and politicised, obtaining the independent and objective consensus on the science of climate change is extremely important. Approximately every six to seven years since 1988, special IPCC assessment reports have been released. The latest assessment report, the fifth in this series, was released in 2014 and involves several hundred scientists and experts who volunteered their time to undertake the rigorous assessment of the evidence for and against the causes, impacts and solutions to climate change and ocean acidification. Explore the history and function of the IPCC and answer the following quiz.